the smallest possible holds you can imagine. Like even when you're above them and you use them as your footholds, they're not, they're terrible footholds. That section for me, when I first tried it, it took me multiple days to link. And I was thinking, you know, it was like an 8B boulder problem, just that section. We're going to get into the whole grade thing now, because yeah, yeah. we've got to. Yeah, I think for sure it has to be at least 9A+. If it's hard enough to be 9B, I really don't know. And, and I think if it was 9B, I don't think it would be particularly unfair. Uh, it's kind of in my eyes like Action Direct or Hubble, where the grade's not really important anymore. Yeah. Like the line itself is... Like the name of it's more important than what grade comes after it. Hello and welcome to a little bit of a special, uh, I was about to say Ask Lattice, but this is most definitely not Ask Lattice. This is more like show and tell. And we've show got tell. Will Bosey <laughs> on the sofa and he's on the sofa right now because he just made the second ascent of mutation at Raventor, which is a route that remains un or remained unrepeated since 1998. That's from earlier than Will was even born. So it's been unrepeated for a very, very long time. It was first established by Steve McClure and Will has put in a significant amount of time and it still took multiple days to repeat it. So I thought it'd be really cool to basically go through the whole process with Will and talk about why such a legendary route like Mutation has remained repeated for so, uh, so long, what it involved for you, how you did it, how you feel about it, and is it really the world's first 9B plus? <laughs> I don't think it's the world's first 9B plus, no. I knew uh, I'd come out of the grave bit like that where you'd be going, no. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's not that hard, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll get onto the whole grades thing. A little bit later but first off is um, to give a little bit of context to anyone watching or listening is I know loads of British climbers and probably quite a lot of Europeans are very aware of the status of mutation and Steve McClure as well but can you kind of just give a little bit of you know history and breakdown behind uh, mutation and what it involves? Yeah so mutation is the extension of uh old Jerry Muffet route, which he gave 8C at the time, Evolution, and it has now been upgraded to 8C+, plus, making it one of the first, if not possibly the first 8C pluses in the world. Um, and then Mutation is an extension on top of that. And Steve McClure claimed it as his, as a first cent, as his first 9A, um, back in November 1998. And yeah, he proposed 9A because it was the hardest thing he had ever climbed. Uh, it was his first 9A. And at the time, it was there weren't that many 9As and very few 9A pluses even around. 9B hadn't, wasn't climbed for uh, quite a few years after. So, yeah, yeah um, he thought 9A was fair. And since then, you know, top level climbers have come, tried it, put time in, and no one's been able to get close, really. I mean, Chris Sharma... Uh, there's a photo of him in the guidebook trying it. I think the quote was that he would never be able to climb this route. Um, Alex Magos has put in a good few days now. Uh, Adam Andra tried it briefly, I think, but uh, admittedly that day was quite wet. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's remained unrepeated for so many years that it's just sort of got the sort of reputation about it that it could well be like, at the time it could have been the hardest route in the world. And even now I think it's still up there as one of the harder routes. Um, and the climbing itself is basically on not that steep, but the smallest possible holds you can imagine. Like, just like stuff that you, like even when you're above them and you use them as your footholds, they're not, they're terrible footholds. So it's just like this, I don't know, it's just this crazy to think it was done so long ago on these holds that, you know, are just absolutely terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at the time, I think it took Steve, 20 27 uh, days I think, yeah roughly. 20 plus days to do the route and he was very very good at that style of climbing um, and he was putting up a lot of the hardest stuff at the time in the area and then I think in terms of breakdown I I think nowadays and you correct me if I'm wrong it's broken down as being a 8c plus then into this really hard fonte sequence out of the 8c plus does that more or less coincide with kind of what you think on it or is that another you know 
armchair grading breakdown that just doesn't I mean, work the, out the in reality. The thing is, you can break it down in like lots of different ways. So, height-wise, the the mutation extension is basically the same length as the bot as evolution, um, but the top couple moves aren't so hard. Like, there's the one clip at the top's not so bad. So, you essentially do evolution, and you have this crazy rollover shoulder move, which I think is the AT you're talking about, and um, I don't actually know what grade that move gets. It's super weird. It's just, it's a, it's like it. What it's what makes a root that move. It's so cool, so fun, and like it's just essentially you're crossing over your body like this. So it's super odd. It, it might. I don't actually know how hard it is. I think I like I could do that move on the first session I tried it. Okay. Yeah. But for me, it was actually the section above that. There's essentially like four to six moves depending on your beta of this like on on the really small holds and that section for me when i first tried it, it took me multiple days to link and i was thinking you know it's like an 8b boulder problem just that section and like having spent a lot more time i mean now when i warm up on that bit it's like feels more like a 7b boulder you know so it, it, that bit i think is probably 18. 7b for you or 7b for me 7b for me just because like that's like how it feels now yeah, whereas okay. it's so it's probably is like an 8a boulder that bit so I reckon if you do evolution, which is C plus, you then add in that crazy shoulder move sequence, and then you get to the boulder. So you're probably doing a 9A to that boulder. Or how I always looked at it was like doing the halfway link, so from the end of Evo to the top. Um, that took me like five days to do. And evolution I did in three goes in the middle of summer. And this link took me five days in good conditions of like serious work, and it was like, if the bottom half's eight C plus, surely the top half then also has to be at least eight C plus, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the breakdown's quite quite intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, it definitely and and like just to give a bit of context to anyone who hasn't been on, I guess even evolution as well, but mutation is we're talking about really small edges here, as in two, three, four mil edges. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're not talking about our classic, you know, relatively steep. 10 mil edges, 8 mil, 12 mil, etc. It's, it's, yeah, they like, as you said, they're like footholds. Yeah. And, and the, the thing that really gets, so some of the, like most of the holds in evolution, um, are, are quite edge like, you know, they're like a complete line. Whereas on the mutation extension, some of the, the crux holds are, they're not only like, you know, as you're saying, like four mil, six mil, they're also broken edges. So you're having to like split your fingers on where they are and if you hit them then slightly wrong you just there's no chance of holding them yeah yeah it's crazy and this year that you've come out of a cycle where you were doing a lot of competition climbing a lot of training but now you've had a year where you've done a real blend of plastic competition and then outdoor climbing both bouldering and lead climbing just to kind of recap for everyone listening because i think this is really important um to provide the backdrop for the amount of effort that you also put into mutation. Can you kind of summarize your last year, what stuff you actually got done in terms of, you know, successful ticks and grades on boulder, lead, etc. Because it's um, a good list. Yes. So I, yeah, this year has been pretty busy for that. I, uh, I climbed um, my first 9A+, because I had done 9B last year, but I hadn't I'd skipped 9A+. I uh, so climbed my first 9A plus and then climbed my second 9B and my first 9B plus. Uh, fingers crossed when it gets repeated, you know. Um, and on top of that, for the roots, I climbed, I think, one, two, three, four 9As this year, I think, including Northern Lights at Kilmsey, which is like pretty rarely repeated until this year, I think. It's had a, f a few repeats now. But, um, so yeah, like really felt like I've cemented my route climbing and actually been able to go out and tick routes, you know, that I go and try rather than like trying stuff and ending up not doing it. So that's been really cool. Bouldering wise, I've, um, I did first ascent of an 8C boulder, which was like my first boulder, first ascent. So that was pretty special. I was really happy with that. And then I've just been in Switzerland and managed to do an 8C boulder in one day, which is like something I've like always wanted to do is like a life Foundation's goals. edge. Yeah, Foundation's yep. edge. Yep. So it's such a classic Dave Graham boulder as well. So like being able to do that boulder in, in one day was amazing. Like, yeah. So done a few boulders this year, but I don't know. Most and, that, and that was kind of filled out by a whole load of, 
you know, V14s, V13s, V12s, all in really quick order as well. Yeah, so every boulder I did in Switzerland, I did like four AB pluses as well. I did them all in a day, um, except one, which I actually like on the flash go, I was like, oh my God, I could flash this boulder. And then just like punted off the end of it like five times or something. And I had to go back the next day. But in one of the days I did two AB plus boulders in a day as well, which is something I've not done of like new climbs. So I was really happy with that too. Okay, so now that we've we've kind of, yeah, established and understanding the baseline of your form essentially of this year and obviously climbing well in both sport and boulder. Now let's wind back the history and then go back to your journey with mutation over the last, you know, four years or so. Because <laughs> it hasn't been something you just started projecting this year. It's been yeah. a little bit of a, you yeah, know, it's a been, trial, it's isn't it? It's been four years. So I did Evolution, the start of it, July 2017. Um, and then I think I started trying mutation in the October of that year. Um, and 2017, I believe was a year, it was either that year or 2016 where I'd done like Rain Shadow and Hubble. So I'd done like my first couple sort of nines and started to think, you know, I could do these other hard routes in the UK and abroad. And so like, oh, mutation's the obvious next one. I'll put some time into that. And yeah, very quickly realized that it was going to take me a lot longer than what the other routes had taken me. Yeah. I think it was 2018, maybe I then, like beginning of 2018, I then sent Hunger, um, Elk Smith's 9A up at the Anvil and was thinking, you know, it must be in good form. I'll go back, put some more time in. And then like, yeah, as 2018 went on, the sessions just kept adding up and I was making progress and I was on red points and thinking I could have a chance, but I'd be able to stick the rollover move from the ground and then just not have a chance at the tops, that top 8A boulder, which I don't know, it was kind of like weird mentally as well because Steve, um, I know he never dropped the top. When he did the, the rollover move, he climbed through that first try and just went to the top. And then I, over like 2018, 2019, 2020, it's like every session I was basically sticking the rollover move and just falling off. And I was just like, oh man, <laughs> like, <laughs> just, yeah, the amount of attempts that basically kept adding up. But the route, because the holes are so small, you need to have perfect skin for them and perfect conditions. And basically that means October is the best month, potentially November, depending how cold it gets. Because if it gets too cold, you then your fingers numb out on it because there's nowhere to stop. So it needs to be like a, a perfect balance. And for the last three years, um, I've basically had like the main competition of the year has been in November. So October, I've been training for it and it's been really frustrating. So I've been trying like, Last year, a lot I tried through the summer and I just couldn't touch the boulder at the top. I would just be sweating off it every time. Mm. Um, I normally try not to complain about conditions too much, but this route was just, for me at least, completely not possible without conditions. So Maybe it's one of those routes that actually matters. Or yeah. Really genuinely matters. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, like, I guess my history of the route, it's been, what, four years, probably around 40 sessions on it. Um, yeah, each year it kind of felt like there was a lot of progress, but also not enough. <laughs> like last year I managed to get a high point and then I was two moves from the top. And then this this session where I did it, I like on the first go, I got a high point again. I got to the next hold. So I was like, oh, I'm ha if I don't do anything for the rest of the year, I was like, oh, I'll be happy with that. That means next year if I can get another high point, I'll be at the top. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And what do you think were the, you know, as you went through those early couple of years, and kind of got involved with the project and went, wow, this is freaking hard. I'm gonna to have to put some time into this. Were there things that you kind of put on your list where you went, I really do need to improve on that thing. I need to get stronger or I need to get more flexible for that move. Did you kind of create a list of prioritizing in your prioritization in your head of what I need to do to get up mutation? Yeah, so to begin with, I, I think I was quite naive, even through the, like the second year maybe where I was thinking that I could definitely go in the next session and do it. And maybe that, that was true and I just didn't get lucky. But like the, the main thing that I thought was I need to just get stronger fingers for the crimps at the top because they're that small. So I went away and trained for like a couple of weeks to be able to one arm dead hang eight mil crimps. 
And then after doing that, that's when I came back and the boulder at the top went from feeling that sort of 8B and all of a sudden I was like, oh, it's actually like not that bad. And that was like a big thing. But other than that, there wasn't any sort of training or anything that I thought like I need to do this and that'll help. I just thought I needed to just kind of be on the route, like more time on the route and learn it better. Mm. It's like, I don't know, it's so unlike any other climb I've ever tried or any like indoor wall that trying to think of how to replicate or train for it was quite di- difficult actually like the thing that made the most sense was time on the route and um, definitely got that <laughs> in yeah. the end i think um so what do you think was the critical thing that when you actually got to the you know the successful day you know this week and or this past weekend and it happened what for you lined up as being those critical factors Cause i know you talked about skin condition and you know good temperatures what actually eventually lined up? Was it also the strength element just being in the right form for you at the moment? Yeah, so I think something that I've learned over the last two years is for outdoor climbing, I almost need like a month to warm up to it. Like, I don't know, in a competition, it's really easy to pull on the base of a route and just try as hard as possible straight away. But for outdoors, I find it's a weird, like, I don't know, to get into the climbing correctly and trying in a different way, maybe, trying hard outside. I find it takes me a while to build up. And because of, because of the comps, I've not had consistency of being able to try outdoors. Um, so I don't think I've been able to like get into that try hard very well. Whereas just coming from Switzerland, so I've been basically outdoor climbing for three weeks. And then having just like taken it chill, but just having like a week or two where I've also just been at the tour, just like I think the consistency was there to be in the, the right sort of shape and the right mental shape. And then, yeah, conditions on the day were absolutely perfect. Like... It was cold, there was a strong wind. And there was a strong wind when Steve did it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was annoyingly periodic, the wind, though. It'd be so good when it was there and it stopped and you're like, oh, I don't know if you try now. <laughs> and then, yeah, my skin was also perfect. So I, th- it, I think having the sort of run up to it and then the conditions and everything just all came together. Yeah. Quite fortunate, really. <laughs> and when you did it, and, and this is where we're going we're gonna to get into the whole grade thing now, because yeah, yeah. we've got to, is... <laughs> Did it feel, you know, when you were there, like at last bowl, coming to the chains, you went, oh, you know what, that wasn't so bad. Or did it still feel, oh, everything coming together just right and I tried freaking hard. Yeah, this is, yeah, it's, I've been thinking like for the whole last day, just like about this. I've, it, because I think I, I honestly lost concept of grade about 20 sessions ago. Like I've put so much time in now, it's kind of probably feels quite irrelevant, but on the first go of the day, I felt incredible on it. It didn't feel hard at all. I was like, yeah, for sure, this is 9A. Like, it it just felt like I was just chilling on every move. And yeah, I still, like, I got the high point, and I just, all I'm doing is going to essentially the best hold on the route, this little slot, and I just, like, missed it. And I was like, oh, man. But if I had done it that go, like, I don't think it would have felt that bad. But then messed up that go. Next go, I didn't climb so good, fell off just before. And then third go, I was feeling quite tired and somehow managed to stick the holds at the top didn't climb it quite as well and had to like try way harder and that it made it feel a lot harder Mm. for sure but probably didn't feel that much harder in the same in comparison to northern lights earlier in the year which is also 9a but northern lights and i remember like took two days and this is like (laughs) four years so that's kind of where the problem is like on the go that i sent it it's like yeah, it could well be 9A. But remembering how much time and work I've put in, I'm like, this, it definitely can't be. And yeah, I really don't know. Like, mm. I, I, I definitely don't think it can be 9A. I don't think that's fair. Um, just because I think the top is harder than the bottom half and the bottom half is 8C plus. So um, be it now that I've done it like uh, evolution, what, 500 times? It maybe doesn't quite feel 8C plus to me. That's the problem, but... Um, do you think part of it is down to this thing that we sometimes get with climbing grading history is that if a baseline is established on a grade and it's been there for a long time you really have to push against the grain to sort of stick your neck out yeah, and if you'd like if this is the first ascent project it would have been different because you'd have no baseline yeah for sure that's yeah that changes it a lot i think like if you were to get an action direct and it felt 8c plus you probably wouldn't say it because <laughs> you know <laughs> um 
Yeah, I think for sure it has to be at least 9A+. plus. If it's hard enough to be 9B, I really don't know. And I don't know how you'd have the, like, the judge to logically say, because there's not any other routes that I know of in the world like it. So mm-hmm. how would you go and try like, other routes to compare it? It's like comparing it to the routes I did in Spain, the two 9Bs there, you know, it's, the holds are so much worse, but the moves are so much easier and it's not steep, so you don't get as tired. Does that correlate it to being the same grade when you look across the whole thing? Maybe. And I think if it was 9B, I don't think it would be particularly unfair. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, I don't think, you know, it'd be like, oh, it's obviously easier than these other ones because if it was, it would have been repeated. Um, and I think Magos is keen to come back and try it more. So hopefully he'll do it soon and he'll probably have a better idea than I do because he's climbed, you know, a lot more routes than I have. But yeah, it's... I'm really not sure. Like... If it is 9B, it's the first 9B in the world, which is flipping awesome. Yeah, and by like a long Steve, way. And for Steve, that's incredible. To do like 9B back in 1998 is just like... the route, I mean, regardless of the grade, the route is so far ahead of its time, it feels like. like mm. In comparison to the other routes, it's just like... It's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. The whole well, I mean, thing. Like, you've, you've even got... You struggle to even find 9A pluses around that same period. And yeah. you know, one of them, open air, was only in that 9A plus category because it's been upgraded since yeah, yeah. that Huber did. So it's, it's a very out there bit of climbing, which is, you know, highly unique in terms of its difficulty. And you've also got, you know, good quality modern climbers trying it and not having an easy time. But this is also the thing, I think, with the style of the route, like being a modern climber is maybe not even useful for it. I think like with it being sort of, terrible holes and quite flat it's more like an old school setting you know like the walls behind this aren't going to help you train for it which is kind of crazy because that's most of the walls you get nowadays mm. um but yeah that's the thing because open air it's the first 9a plus and if it hadn't been upgraded and this was 9a plus this would be the first because i don't think the biography was done till it's like 2003 2003, I think, 2003 yeah. yeah so could well have been the first and i mean if it had given 9a plus at the time it would have been the first yeah, um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so, so maybe we'll we'll leave that one for the the armchair debaters and uh, yeah. and subsequent ascensionists and where that I comes mean, in. Half tends to just take eight C plus, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm really struggling with that. I could, like, it doesn't really. Uh, it's kind of in my eyes like Action Direct or Hubble, where the grade's not really important yeah. anymore. Like the line itself is. Like the name of it's more important than what grade comes after it. Like if you're going grade hunting, this is not a route you're going to go and pick, you know? Yeah, yeah. And maybe that's something that should remain is that, you know, if people are debating between the kind of the 9A plus slash B grade or whether it should just be a slash grade, then just go on the harsher side and keep it the 9A plus because then people can't grade hunt for it. So yeah. then it remains in that legendary status of, you know, you have to work so hard to achieve that thing, you don't get the grade with, you know, with it. That's, yeah, that's the one thing. I'd be, I would be incredibly impressed if someone was able to come and just, like, smash it out. Cause, In just a few days. Yeah, like, I think everyone that's tried it's, like, had to work really hard. And obviously only so far me and Steve have actually managed to get there. So it's, yeah. I think it is, like, just one of those routes that you can't just smash out, which is really cool. Well, talking of Steve, I've got a little surprise for you. Is, uh, is he around the back now? <laughs> He's just down the back of the sofa. <laughs> That'd be amazing. He's I've, just been I've hiding this the whole time. Up. I actually spoke to Steve last night um, yeah. about your ascent, and he's obviously really psyched about it. Yeah, I'm so pleased a little that, bit as well. <laughs> you know, hasn't gathered his dust and everything like that. But I did ask him to pose a couple of questions himself to you. Oh, yeah. So I want to get, read out those questions <laughs> to you now, because I think that Steve, you know, has his own perspective on it obviously yeah, having for, spent all that sure. time and you know watched it be attempted over the years i mean he's he's watched me on many sessions yeah, yeah. At the tour. even last year i got him back on it oh, did you? it was really cool um like he was still you know smashing about in the moves like it was 20 years ago it was like right that's that's impressive yeah yeah that no that was cool but 
this will be interesting. Okay, so first question is, um, why do you think it's so hard, and you've kind of touched on this a little bit, um, but why it's so hard to do versus the grade? Yeah, just because everything has to be perfect. Um, it's not a route you can make a mistake and get away with it on. Um, like, e what for me on Evo, I could, there was a few bits I could mess up slightly, it wouldn't affect too much, but once you actually get into the mutation crux, if you have a foot pop or get a hold slightly wrong, it's, you're, you're off. Like, you could try and get to the next hold, but your hand over, like, I had four goes in a row where I got to the third last hold and my hand's ripped off because I didn't have it quite right or conditions weren't quite right. And like, that's the big thing. So you need to claim it perfectly. Uh, you need the conditions to be perfect. Cause even if you claim it well in bad conditions, you're going to rip off or your foot's going to pop or you'll just be slightly too tired. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if, if your skin's not perfect, you're not getting up it. Like I, from like the diff what's crazy is evolution in the end like i i did evolution i think six times in a day and yet i could go there on a day and be fresh and if my skin wasn't good i couldn't do the first boulder on it like the the crimps is so small that you just if your skin's like soft you just slip off it yeah it's absolutely crazy to me but yeah i think it just all these things added together just makes it completely ridiculous to try and actually put together <laughs> low margin route yeah yeah, okay. Um, he wanted to know, did it actually get to your head? Eventually? Oh yeah, for was sure. It a proper head battle as well? Yeah, so in like years two and three, I like how I can refer to it as years, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I know me and you have talked about this a lot over the years as well. Um, yeah, no, it really, really got to me. Um, and like I would get really frustrated trying it. And then last year I kind of actually got over the whole, that whole side of it and I kind of, I don't know, I had good goals where I actually made high points for the first time in, you know, probably years. And I kind of, in my head, I, I got kind of over the route in a way where I just like kind of knew that I might never climb it. And I kind of accepted that. I was completely fine with the fact that I might never actually climb the route. Mm -hmm. And weirdly, I think that kind of, I don't know, like I went back to not being frustrated and just enjoying trying it and actually the, like enjoying the moves more. Um, and then yeah this year it was like I don't know getting back on it like still with that in my head that I was like oh I'll just try it and completely happy falling off like you know I had two goes where I ripped off like I, like at my high point just like ripped off the hold and I was just like you know not not angry not frustrated nothing just like oh cool <laughs> that happened again <laughs> like and I think that actually helped a lot in the end like coming like full circle and going back to the sort of not being bothered by it but in the middle for sure it got to my head big time <laughs> like I don't, it's just yeah i think it's easy to feel pressured on stuff especially when you put a lot of time in yeah but then it's also weird when you put so much time in that you kind of feel like you lose the pressure because you're like oh i might it might just be too hard i don't know <laughs> yeah um uh then last question is do you think this type of route is trainable for, or can you only really do this kind of stuff by just climbing at the tour? The, yeah, this is kind of what we touched on a bit earlier. I think nowadays it's very hard to train for. Like you could, you can do what I did, go and like train to hang on tiny crimps and it will help. But I think without actually going and putting the time in, it's really difficult. Like just the consistency from like having three sessions at the tour, like, this like the session I did it was just like straight away even just after two it was just so much better mm. and I think it's I don't know even when I've got on like the routes that only get like 7c plus at the tour and you just there's holds on them that you're just like oh my like how is this 7c plus but when you're actually climbing there a couple of times like, oh that makes sense and I, I think it's really hard to do without training there yeah and the footwork I think is another big thing it's yeah. very hard to get pushed to that much of a limit indoors yeah that type of footwork yeah for sure like i don't know just like i i, I know all the feet so well now that like you know i just like st stand them so easily but sometimes you do look at them and you go that's not good is it <laughs> like you're just on this horrendous polished because that's the thing they're all quite polished now as well horrendous polished smear and you just just like fully trusting it like yeah i think to just turn up and do the route would be really incredible yeah well i'm 
Oh, I just don't think, I don't know if I'm going to see that. Not like in a day. It's not. Which seems amazing. Yeah. Considering that the lowish compared to like nine C's now. Yeah, exactly. That exists. Exactly. But. Like Magos has just flashed like, what, two or three nine A's or something this year? And it's like, yeah, it's, it's mad that it could be that it was given the same grade, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so now that it's done, mm-hmm. what kind of, what lies ahead? What you got, what you got your eyes on? How much, how much you, how much rumor mill are you willing to <laughs> yeah. pump up with what you have ahead? Retirement. Retirement. Yeah. <laughs> Third first. No. Um, Sorry, sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, it's, I've got some stuff that I want to put some time into up in Scotland. Um, yeah. And I mean, at the tour, Brandenburg Gate's the obvious one. Um, it's the only like, true project that's left like a new start with like completely new climbing um and i have i've had a little look at it and i think it could go so probably try that yeah can't get away from the tour can you <laughs> world, now you're in deep class now. venue that yeah um other than that just training and then i i really want to like one of my big goals is to go and do like 8c plus boulder yeah. yeah i know that's very much grade hunting but like to me i just want to like test my strength in that sense so that's something i want to do and there's some that i'm super inspired by that i want to go try so hopefully i'll get to do that soon awesome well uh thanks very much for yeah coming in at a last last minute notice and <laughs> i know you've like only just basically got down from doing doing the projects and everything like that but like i mean i think me and basically the whole of the uk scene especially are just so psyched about this um I, there's a I've lot of history behind smiling, this to be honest yeah yeah so it's it's really really cool and uh well done for sticking at it and, and getting it done thank you well thanks for having me yeah no problem <laughs> at all i uh, hope you all enjoyed that um we have uh there's a few other bits and pieces that we've done with will um on the channel uh, i know we did a board session with you so if you want to see Bo- will um on the board and see him doing some Dirty mono problems. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. that thing, yeah. Uh, you can see Will elsewhere. Otherwise, uh, check out Will's uh, Instagram. He's pretty active on there. There's loads of really good posting. Your handle is? Will, <clears throat> Will underscore Bozy. Okay, we'll put that in the show notes. Um, and otherwise, we'll catch you very soon.